come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is a place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. me that Jethro had had a mountain lion. I tell you it's true. I sent Jethro to the root cellar, and when he didn't come back, I went to see what was keeping him, and there stood a great big mountain lion licking his chops. <laughs> he had my baby boy right out from under his head. Is the truck gone? Mountain lions don't eat trucks. They is flesh eaters. I know that, but I figured if the truck was gone, that might tell us what happened to Jethro. I told you what happened. He was hit by a mountain lion in the root cellar. Now, you gonna get your gun and shoot him before he eats the rest of the family? <laughs> it's kind of dark in that root cellar. What you seen might not have been a mountain lion at all. I tell you, I seen him. There's a wild varmint in the root cellar. We've been out here in Beverly Hills for going on to eight years now. And the wildest thing we've seen yet is that movie star lived down the street. Which one? One with the long blonde hair, wears them wild clothes and jewelry, walks with a wiggle. You know the fella. <laughs> I tell you, there's a mountain lion in my roof cellar. Now, are you gonna shoot him or do I have to? Quick as I have this cereal, I'll take a look. How can you sit there eating cereal at a time like this? It ain't easy. <laughs> Farmer's eating your kin, folks, and Jeff. Now what? Where's Ellie? Maybe the mountain lion had hurt, too. I sent Ellie out to get the morning mail. Now, will you sit down and get a hold of yourself? Here's the mail, Pa. Oh, fine, Ellie. Now, run fetch your Pa's gun. He's going to shoot that mountain lion in the root cellar. <gasps> Giant going to shoot Herman. Herman? Well, I got him yesterday at the animal farm. He's my new pet. Some pet. He ate your cousin Jack Rowe. Herman wouldn't do that. Well, he did, and your Pa's fixing to shoot him. Please go, Pa. Do what you have to do, kid. Kinfolks comes ahead of Armin. You ain't gonna do it, are you, Pa? Looks like the only thing I ain't gonna do for sure is eat this cereal. Oh. Well, I'll give it to Herman. He just loves it. Herman, come get your breakfast. Don't bring no man eating beast in here. He ain't no man eating beast, Granny. See, he's just as tame as a kitten. You get that vicious killer out of my kitchen. <laughs> Come on, Herman. We best scoot. <laughs> you see, Jed? I told you I seen a man eating beast. Yep. Now, if you'll fetch me another bowl, you'll see a man eating cereal. <laughs> uh, looks like somebody has sent us the latest copy of the Silver Dollar City News. Who was it? Don't say it. Well, doggy, guess he's getting married. Who? Alverna Bradshaw's daughter. Big mouth Bradshaw? <laughs> yep. Are you telling me that the homeliest girl in the hills has got herself a fella? Seems that way. I don't believe it. Read it for yourself. Here it is, in black and white. Yep. Elverna's daughter is getting married. Yep. I don't believe it. <laughs> right, it's true, Granny. You realize what this means? I'm afraid.
afraid it means I ain't gonna eat this cereal. We've got to get Ellie Mae married right away. Why? Because Big Mount Bradshaw is two days younger than Ellie. And if she gets married before your daughter, you're going to be disgraced. No, I won't. Well, think of Ellie. She'll die of shame. Oh, I won't bother Ellie. Ah, think about Jethro. Why, he's a boy with a lot of pride. He's liable to leave home. Not as long as we got Vittles here. <laughs> no joking matter. We've got to take Ellie back to the hills and get her married right away. There's no time to lose. Why the hill? Because that's where the men are the marrying kind. <laughs> Could we talk about this after I have my breakfast? I'm powerful hungry. No, Jed. We've got to settle this matter right now. There's no time to lose. Well, all right. You go next door and ask Mr. Drysdale, would he keep an eye on a place if we go back? Good idea. <laughs> Jenny, how about the bill? Oh, thank you, Uncle Jed. <laughs> Where you been, Jethro? Into college. Yeah, college, huh? Good for you. How long you been going? This is my first day. See, I fell in with this your college crowd. They made me realize how much I've been missing. Do tell. Oh, yeah. See, even though I graduated sixth grade, there's still more I can learn. <laughs> I'm proud of you, boy. Thanks, Uncle Jim. It's fun, too. Real nice bunch of fellas. And talk about smart. <laughs> Any of them fellas unmarried? All of them, as far as I know. Well, you reckon you could fetch home one of them college fellas, uh, introduce them to your cousin Ellie? Fetch home a whole bunch of them. Then you can take her pick. Well, it'll be just dandy. Well, look at that. Just enough cereal left for one more bowl. Thank you, Uncle Jed. <laughs> when you're hungry, ain't nothing like a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Nothing like it as far as I'm concerned. Dante, Melvin Drysdale here. Yes. What's the gold market doing there in London today? Uh huh. All right, buy me five million in bullion. Right. Now listen, Chauncey. Tell Onassis I'm prepared to invest fifty million in that Greek shipping deal. And uh, tell that Dutch oil syndicate I'm ready with the thirty million they need. Right. Get back to me at the office. Okay. Yes, come in. Excuse me, Chief. Granny's here and she'd like to ask you a favor. What is it? Well, they're going on a trip and they'd like you to keep an eye on the house and take care of Ellie's critters. The answer is no. I am a bank president, not a caretaker. An international financier, not a zookeeper. And Granny's going to be told that right now. Go tell her. Me? Well, why don't you tell her? Miss Hathaway, I just told you, I am an international financier. I just invested $85 million by long-distance telephone, and I can't afford to argue with those hillbillies. Why not? Because it's their $85 million. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Drysdale. Did Miss Jane tell you the news? She's going on a little trip. Uh, Palm Springs? Lake Arrowhead? No, we's going to God's country. Fort Knox? <laughs> no, we're going back home to the hills. What for? To get Ellie May a husband. Uh, Granny, there's plenty of eligible men right here. Now, don't start that again. You've been yelling suey for the last seven years, and you ain't got a hog to the trough yet. <laughs> now, we'll be leaving as soon as the truck is loaded, so you fetch our money over to us. All of it? Well, Ellie has got to have a dowry. Granny, you don't want to go back to the hills with $85 million. It's better than nothing. <laughs> no, no, sister, steady, sir. Do you realize if they take their money out of my bank, I'm ruined? We'll, we'll think of a plan. Maybe, maybe There's we There's no can... time to think or plan. This calls for action. Now. Chief! <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to stab all four of them. No! Let go of me! They're not driving back to the hills! Chief, come to your senses! You can't use that on the carpets! I don't intend to. I'm going to puncture the tires on their truck. Oh. They'll have to get some out of a catalog. It'll take three weeks to get new ones. Dad! Dad! Here, Granny. Are you still eating cereal? It looks like it. 
Well, make that your last bowl. Then let's get packed and loaded and on the road. Well, Granny, we might not have to go back to the hill. What you mean? Well, Jethro is fetching over a whole covey of nice young college fellas for Ellie to look over. Ed, you have been beating these Beverly Hills bushes for seven years. And what have you got to show for it? A bunch of beat-up bushes and an old maid daughter. Granny, I think we ought to keep an open mind about this. Come on, Jed. Let's pack up and get back to the hills. At least let Ellie meet the boys. She might gotten the one of them. All right. I've got a completely open mind about it. Of course, let's have Ellie Mae meet the college boys. Good. And as quick as she's met them, let's head for the hill. He's his uh, college student? Yes, sir. Fetched him right off the campus. <laughs> oh, this here's my Uncle Jed. Howdy. Hey, man. How are you? Oh. This here is Mitch. He's been to 12 colleges. Ah, it's a dandy record. What all did you study? Study? <laughs> they don't study. They, they protest. Well, what do they protest? Everything. You name it, they protest it. They march up and down in front of the college holding signs. Well, uh, how about you? Ain't you learning nothing? Oh, yeah. I'm carrying three subjects. Oh, good, good. Uh, what are they? Down with the dean, down with the faculty, and down with the region. <laughs> you walk around carrying signs, too, huh? Heck yeah. That's what college is all about. <laughs> well, uh, don't you go inside at all? Starting tomorrow, I do. They's going to let me bust down the dean's door and tie him up. <laughs> Why are you going to do that? Because I'm part of the academic revolution. I'm fighting for intellectual freedom. I'm throwing off the shackles of the economic power structure and putting down you corporate entities and conglomerates. I have done solved my identity problem. I know where I'm going and who I am. I'm free to make up my own mind and do my own thing. And what is that? They ain't told me yet. <laughs> I got a couple of things to tell you. Dad! Dad! Yeah, Granny? Uh, stay where you are. I'll be right there. Man, is that the chick you were telling me about? Oh, yeah. That's my cousin Ellie. Hi, Ellie. I'd like to meet these three guys. Two guys. I'm a girl. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. You want to swing? Cool. Okay, let's split. It meant a meaningful relationship. Hey, would you like to go to college? Well, well yes, sir, I reckon so. Come on, if we are, we can get there in time for the 12 o'clock cafeteria break. Really? Yeah, 12 o'clock, we're going to break the cafeteria. <laughs> hey, wait for me. I'll help you break it, but let's eat first. Mr. Drive. Oh, Granny, you're still here! <laughs> to see you. I love you. Mm. She was afraid you'd gone back to the hills to find the family of beauty a husband. I ain't looking for no husband. Now put me down. It's Ellie and me we're wanting to find a husband for. Did you fetch over the money? Money? Our 85 million. Where is it? Well, you can't withdraw any money today, you see. The bank is closed. Well, you better come into the kitchen and explain that to Jim. Chief, the bank is not closed. If they withdraw 85 million, it will be. <laughs> Jim, not another bowl of cereal. That's right. Not another bowl of cereal. All right, Herman, come and get it. Oh, Mr. Clavin, 
What's this ugly rumor about you're going back to the hills? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it ugly. And we've taken our money with us. That's the ugly part. <laughs> Why? Oh, I, I mean, there's a terrible risk involved. You might be held up and robbed. You think so? Well, only this morning, Miss Hathaway disarmed a desperate man right here in this neighborhood. Really? Yes. Threw him down, took his knife away from him as he was headed for your house. <laughs> well, quite true. Terrible man. The moment his weapon was gone, he turned into a sniveling, whimpering cur. You must be plum tuckered, Miss Jane. Sit down. Well, I, I, I did work up a bit of an appetite. Uh, do you mind if I have a bowl of cereal? Help yourself. And uh, lots of luck. I'll get you a bowl, Miss Jane. I'm glad to see somebody else getting some cereal. Jed has been stuffing himself all morning. <laughs> Mr. Diamond, let's sit down and talk this over. Well, now, I'm, uh, I'm pretty well set on going back home, Mr. Drydew. Oh, Mr. Clappett, do you want that beautiful, sweet daughter of yours to marry some barefoot, ragged, slovenly, unwashed clod? No, sir. That's the reason I want to go home. I want to get her away from them college boys. <laughs> college boys? Yes, ma'am. Jethro is going to college, and he fetched home some boys to meet Ellie, but there wasn't a keeper in the bunch. I didn't think Jethro could qualify for college. Oh, yeah, he can march and protest with the best of them. He carries them signs higher than anybody. Mr. Clamp, please stay here. There, there, there's no guarantee that you'll find a husband for Ellie back in the hills. Ah! If Big Mouth Bradshaw can get a man, Ellie can get a dozen of them. I kind of think we ought to give it a try. There's some mighty fine boys back around uh, Bug Tussle, Silver Dollar City. And besides, we's lonesome for the hills. Mighty pretty back there this time of the year. Leaves turning. Well, you'll come back right away, won't you? I kind of like to do a little trout fishing with old Jim Owen. He knows where them big rascals hide out. And you can go hunting and get me a brace of wild turkeys for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? <laughs> the best hunt is right after the first snowfall. Oh, Jen, let's stay for a white Christmas. Cr Christmas? <laughs> you know, my favorite time of year back home is when the dogwood blooms in the spring. Spring. Hard to beat summer in them cool woods. Summer? <laughs> that makes a whole year. That's right. Time sure flies in the hill. Yeah, a year would only tease us. Let's just stay there. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Paul. I'm a college girl now. Where have you been? Been in a protest march out to college. Don't draft me. Where did you get that? Well, I didn't have a sign to carry, so I took this away from a felt. What happened to your pretty dress? Well, I traded it for these groovy threads that I got at the camp of Slop Shop. Slop Shop? I think she means Swap Shop. <laughs> Come with me. Well, where are we going? Back home to the hills. You are going to beat Big Mount Bradshaw to the altar. <laughs> hey, soul cousin. <laughs> did Ellie tell you about the raid on the college cafeteria? Wiped them out. Ain't got a bit of food left. Well, it sounds like a mob. How many were there? Just me. <laughs> Meet the Jed baby. That college life is a gas. I mean, that's where it's happening. Don't sound like you're happening to learn much. <laughs> Not true, old timer. We's learning the three R's: rioting, raiding, and ransacking. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old cat just don't dig. He's so far out, it's pitiful. I mean, come on, Dad. Like, get with it. Sweet little pups. Lay some skin on me. You know, I might just do that. <laughs> Bless his sweet old heart. Marches to a different drummer. I ain't blaming you old folks. It's the generation gap. But I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm tuned in, turned on, and toned up. Well, tune out, turn off, and pack up. We're going home. <laughs> Is he kidding? I ain't going back to the hills. I'm a college man. <laughs> Stay right here where I got intellectual freedom. You're absolutely right, Jethro. You don't want to be a college dropout. I sure don't. College is fun. There's lots of fellas and lots of girls. And quick as I can learn to tell them apart, it's going to be a lot more fun. <laughs> oh, there you are, boy. Let's get these bags on the truck. Yeah, now you hurry and pack while I put up some lunch for the road. I ain't going, Granny. What did you say? I ain't going back to the hills. I want to stay right here and pursue my education. Well, gee whiz, Jethro. If you don't drive the truck, they can't none of us go. What's this? Not going back to the hills? Oh, what a shame. 
Just hide away. Let's give the carpets a hand. Get these bags upstairs and unpack. You giving this any thought? Yes, sir. Talk the whole thing over with Mr. Drysdale. I'm going to be a college graduate, just like him, and hold out a white-collar job. Is that so? Yes, sir. I don't need to work with my hands, plowing fields and busting stumps. I'm going to use my head. <laughs> you go along with us, do you, Mr. Drysdale? Mr. Clavett, honesty demands that I reply in the affirmative. This fine boy has a great potential. I'm proud of him. I believe in him. Oh, I only wish I had a boy just like him. You got him. <laughs> what? We're going to leave this fine boy with great potential with you. Miss Jane, could you drive us to the airport and get us on a plane to home? Yes, I, I guess so. Come on, so. Granny. Ellie May, let's go. Stop. Just a minute. I, was, I didn't mean anything. Hey, but... right there. Let him go. Or can I call you Dad? <laughs> Nuts. Okay. Come on, Nuts. Well, you can fix vittles for me and the critters whilst we talk about my great potential. <laughs> Black hat, black boots, black belt. Bad news for the bad guys. Walker, Texas Ranger. Weeknights at 6 on the Hallmark Channel. Tomorrow. I'm taking the case. Don't miss Hallmark Channel's Matlock Movie Marathon. Everybody be cool. You're out of your mind. Watch Matlock as he cracks the case in a full day of killer thrillers. Whatever you do, don't lie. I hate that. The Matlock Movie Marathon, tomorrow, starting at 1 on the Hallmark Channel. Welcome back now. Here.